cataractcoach.com, a surgeon's first IOL exchange case. So if this young surgeon can do it, so can you. Here's how. Let's go through the case. Now, this is a case where a patient has an IOL in the eye. The lens itself looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. And so maybe it's a power error of some sort. But they're going to have a lens exchange being done here. So the surgeon made a new incision here. Question is, do you make a new incision or you open up the old incision? And now here, you got to get under the anterior capsule rim here. I'd choose a smaller needle than that. That's a very large needle in the viscoelastic. That's better. The cannula is that's smaller. 27 gauge is better. You want to get under that rex's edge and then do some visco dissection. I like a dispersive viscoelastic here because it's a little thinner. It flows a little bit better. And the trick in this is you need to be able to separate the anterior and posterior leaflets of the capsular bag. And so you can see it looks like an attending there with a squirt bottle cannula giving some advice. And so getting under that rex's edge, oh, you don't want that air bubble, but that's okay, no big deal. And so this takes a little bit of time, get the bubbles out. Now there's a bubble behind the optic, which is okay. And you want to be very careful here with the capsule bag. Now this type of lens, that's an um, AMO or Johnson & Johnson lens, that's the Technus lens. That's going to have the resistance point at the haptic optic junction, where the haptic optic junction gets thin and then it gets immediately thicker. And that's kind of the holding point. Whereas in the Alcon lens, there's a terminal bulb, like a bulb at the very tip of the haptic. And so now you're getting here, getting that loosened up. And it'd be helpful here to have a little bit more view, but that iris is a little bit on the small side. And so maybe a little viscomedrize or something, push the iris out of the way. You want to see the rex's edge a little bit better. And again, the key here is to take your time and you need to do some good dissection. There we go. Once you get one haptic out, you can put it on top of the iris like you did there. And then be very careful, carefully dissect out. Good. I like the viscoelastic there. Sometimes you can also use a spatula. Use the blunt end of a spatula. I wouldn't use a synthke. It's a little sharper. But you can use a synthke to grab that, sure. But you need to open up the anterior and posterior leaflet. So separate that out. So you can use the cannula there, injecting a little bit. Again, you want to have a little bit better view of what's going on at the capsule bag equator, that area. And use a blunt cannula if you need to to really separate those out. And once you do that, there we go. Now the lens is free. Now, at this point, I like to do the twist and out technique, which we know we feature on Cataract Coach. That allows you to extract this lens just with some tying forceps and a spatula through the existing incision without having to cut it. And let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. I bet you you're going to use scissors. Now, if you want to use scissors for the first time you're doing this, that's okay also. Just keep in mind, those lens cutting scissors will easily damage and pop your posterior capsule. So in a case like this, you, it may be better to keep the old lens up in the AC first. Then inject the new lens in the bag to protect the bag, and then cut out this lens. Also, you don't have to cut all the way through. You don't need two distinct pieces. You could have cut it 90% of the way through, pull out one piece, and then the second piece follows because it's still attached. It come out like train boxcars. So there's half, and now more viscosity to get the other piece out. Grab that, pull that out too. Again, I would have preferred the twist and out technique, but you do you, young Jedi. I appreciate it. You did a good job here. Now, you can also clean the caps or bag. That PCO you saw at the beginning of the case, you can pass that off right about now. Hey, did I tell you about the Cataract Coach website where we have such great material, such as the free PDF book about learning cataract surgery, a 25-part curriculum series, amazing for residents and fellows. It's free. You should check it out. Now, back to the case here. I would prefer at this point to clean up that posterior caps a little bit. You can use like a polishing device and just gently scrape off any of the PCO that was there. It comes off pretty easily. Um, if you need to, you can put the new lens in first and then use the IA probe, go underneath the optic of the new lens. And so here, surgeons are spending some time opening up that capsule bag before the new lens goes inside the eye. Now let's talk about lens calculations, lens powers. Let's do some math together, all right? Work with me here. Let's say the patient had a 20 diopter lens and ended up a plus two in spectacles afterwards. What would the new lens power be? If you take out the 20, you're going to put a new lens, what are you going to put in the eye to achieve Plano? Well, remember, one and a half diopters on the IOL is one diopter of the spectacle, pretty much. So if the patient's a plus two and you have a 20 diopter lens in the bag, you need a 23 diopter lens in the bag, which is one and a half times the plus two, in order to get the patient to Plano. Look at the PCO that's still there. Ugh, you should have cleaned that up. Don't leave the PCO in there. Get that stuff off the posterior capsule. So you can get it out with the IA probe. It's still not done. Let's get the IA probe underneath there and remove that PCO. It's very easy to do. Capsule's intact. I would just use the IA probe. I'm not sure why the surgeon's not using an IA probe right here. 
Yeah, I probably watch the Levis Classic very easily. Mm, again, if you're doing this for the first time, please just use the IA probe. It's so much easier. It makes life much, much easier. Because remember, to, to do the visco dissection of the IOL, use a lot of that dispersive visco It doesn't remove itself from the eye so easily. Right? Cohesive stays together and aspirates out, or you can flush it out pretty easily. The dispersive tends to stick around everything, it tends to coat things. That's why it has the name coat in it. Ocucoat, endocoat, viscoat, those are all dispersives because they coat things. And again, PCO is left here. I guess you've got a YAG laser. You can use that too in the post op period. But it looks like some mild color to bring the pupil down. New lens is also a single piece lens. That also went in the capture bag, which is pretty good. And again, I'd want to make sure I get all that viscoelastic out. It'd be much easier just to use an IA probe here as opposed to just kind of flushing it out little by little. But patients should do pretty well. You may also want to check the astigmatism for the patient and do an LRI if appropriate in order to get this patient the appropriate refractive outcome. If you're back in the OR anyway, you may as well really nail it. And now here at the end, looks like some subconj injection, maybe antibiotics, steroid something, and call it a day. Great case of death, but you can do an eye well. We've got great videos on cataractcoach.com. you got to leave YouTube and check that website out, and you'll find a lot of great material. Plus, remember, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology is the Cataract Coach Podcast. You will absolutely love it and learn a lot, too.